Jupiter may be the biggest planet in the solar system, but it's also one of the most mysterious. What's beneath its swirling skies? What causes its massive storms? What's it made of? NASA spacecraft Juno is on the hunt for answers. It is the second designed under NASA's New Frontiers program to send unmanned missions exploring our neighbours in the solar system and will reach its destination on the 4th of July this year. Launched on the 5th of August 2011 from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida, Juno was hurled into space, tucked neatly inside a colossal Atlas V rocket. But plans had been in the making for a decade. It was built, tested and prepared in Colorado, with collaborators and commissions across more than 20 institutions in the US and Europe. Juno features three signature solar panels connected to a central radiation-repelling core that houses most of the instruments that will scrutinise Jupiter. Upon leaving Earth, Juno deployed its solar panels and set off on a circular manoeuvre around the Sun and back to Earth. But why go halfway around the solar system to end up right where you started? Tanya Hill, curator of the Melbourne Planetarium in Australia, explains. The thing about the Juno spacecraft is that it couldn't actually get all the way out to Jupiter on its own. You'd need a lot of fuel, a lot of rocket power to send a spacecraft that far away in the solar system. Juno could only make it out to about Mars or the asteroid belt from where it launched. It then got tugged back in by the pull of the sun's gravity and the mission designers planned it so that as Juno came back towards the inner solar system, it would fly by Earth. And in doing this, it could actually use the Earth to boost its velocity. So what actually happens in a gravity assist? The key is, is that Earth is not stationary in space. Earth is moving around the sun. So when our spacecraft flies by Earth, not only does it change direction, but it gets boosted and its speed increases relative to the sun. And that put it in the right place and at the right speed so that it can get to the planet Jupiter. In fact, the gravity assist boosted Juno's speed by about seven kilometers per second, or around 26,000 kilometers per hour. By the time Juno enters Jupiter's orbit, the spacecraft will have travelled 2,835,000,000 kilometres. That's 70,000 times around the Earth. Once Juno inserts itself into Jupiter's orbit, the spacecraft will begin a systematic series of observations, powered by its waning solar panels. What I really love about the Juno mission is the fact that this little spacecraft is going to be probing inside Jupiter. It's not actually sending a probe or it's not actually going into Jupiter at all. It's understanding what is inside that gas giant planet just by flying above it. Now it flies fairly close. It's on an orbit that actually takes it about 5,000 kilometers above the surface of the planet. And then it orbits all the way out. In fact, traveling about 2 million kilometers away from Jupiter. When it gets nice and close, there's a number of things that it's trying to work out what's going on beyond the cloud tops of Jupiter. One of the big things is, does uh, Jupiter have an inner core? We think that the way planets form is that you have this rocky core, little pieces of, of rock and material form, and then the atmosphere of Jupiter then got attracted to that rocky mass, and that's what became the giant planet. But we don't know for certain that the core actually exists, and Juno is going to be able to find that out. Juno will also investigate the elemental makeup of the planet, map its intense magnetic field, measure the water and ammonia levels in the atmosphere, and observe the planet's northern and southern lights. To do this, Juno will orbit Jupiter 33 times over more than a year, covering a different slice of the planet each time. As it orbits, the spacecraft also spins, acting like a gyroscope, stabilising the centre and allowing equal time for each instrument on board to work its magic. When Juno flew closest to the Earth, the spacecraft was able to generate around 12 kilowatts of solar power from the Sun. But by the time it reaches Jupiter, energy levels trail off, providing barely enough power to run a hairdryer. 
That's still ample power for the mission though, because all Juno's movements will be helped along by Jupiter's gravitational pull. During Juno's 34th orbit, the spacecraft will manoeuvre itself closer and closer to Jupiter until it reaches the atmosphere. Juno was not designed to infiltrate the planet, but observe from a distance. As Juno descends into Jupiter's intense magnetic fields, it will encounter radiation equivalent to 100 million dental X-rays. The spacecraft will burn on entry, like the Galileo probe in 2003. NASA's main reason for the planned suicide is to make sure Jupiter's moons don't pick up contaminants carried from Earth that could threaten the existence or emergence of life. Anyone looking to get more involved in the mission can visit NASA's JunoCam website to become a virtual director. People from every corner of the globe can upload images and vote on which sections of Jupiter should be photographed. <laughs>